Crowley taught that in order for the new eon of Antichrist to be established, he had to initiate the world into homosexuality. Crowley began by implementing many of his homosexual sex magic rituals into a secret order called the OTO. The musical group White Stains named themselves after erotic homosexual poetry written by Aleister Crowley, which Crowley grossly entitled White Stains. They keep f***ing with us, then maybe we're going to have to start throwing bombs to make them stop. We're young! We're queer! We're going to rule the world! We're young! We're queer! We're going to rule the world! You're about to see startling evidence that Crowley had as much influence on the world with his sex revolution as he did with the drug revolution. Aleister Crowley knew that if he was to establish a new age of Antichrist, he would have to destroy God's design for family, consisting of men and women as husband and wife. Crowley therefore declared in his book Magic Without Tears that family was public enemy number one. Crowley, who was out to destroy the family, said this, quote, Think what horrid images it evokes from the mind. Not only Victorian, wherever the family has been strong, it has always been an engine of tyranny. Curse them. They are always in the way. To the performance of this work, speaking of the new age, the nearest obstacle and the most obvious is the family. Since the satanic revolution of the 1960s, there has been an incredible attack on the family as homosexual recruiting has increased dramatically. Crowley made it no secret that he was interested in popularizing homosexual deviancy and even child molestation. Crowley declared, Let me seduce the boys of England. I shall fight openly for that which no living Englishman dare defend, even in secret, sodomy. And in truth, there seems no better way to avoid a contamination of women. Sodomy is an aristocratic virtue which our middle class had better imitate if they wish to be smart. Crowley's emphasis on homosexuality found their way into mainstream politics initially through homosexual organizer Harry Hay. This is highly significant because Harry Hay, who led the charge of the sodomy revolution in the 60s, was like Leary, a disciple of Aleister Crowley's teachings. Project 10, which was based on the skewed statistic of sex researcher Alfred Kinsey, who claimed that 10% of the USA was gay, is still a program that is taught in public schools today as homosexuals seek to recruit among the young and impressionable. Project 10 seeks to get impressionable elementary students to explore possibly latent homosexual tendencies by lying to them and claiming that the basis of Kinsey statistics that 10% of them are homosexuals and need to accept it. Incredibly, along with Harry Hay, the world's most renowned sex researcher, Alfred Kinsey, was also influenced by the works of Satanist Aleister Crowley. Playboy magazine probably did more than any other publication in the 1960s to popularize the sexual revolution. In fact, Hugh Hefner credited Kinsey and his flawed research in his first issue of Playboy. Incredibly, Robert Anton Wilson, who edited the Playboy Forum throughout much of the hippie movement, has admitted to practicing Crowley's magic and reading all of his available works. In the 1960s, homosexual youth was rallied to take to the streets. Not coincidentally, the founder of the modern homosexual movement, Crowley and Satanist Harry Hay, was dubbed the oldest hippie of the 1960s. Harry Hay, who was also a music teacher, knew how to influence and subvert the youth through music. Hay said that this language, speaking of music, had the power to communicate ideas, plans, and issues through the form of songs, and dances under the noses of the authorities as a weapon. Music always had the power to inspire revolt and revolution. Hay declared, to two-thirds of the world today, music is a language, a method of communicating, organizing, educating, mobilizing. Crowley's most effective tools for transformation, though, were not Timothy Leary, Harry Hay, Kinsey, or Robert Anton Wilson. Best-selling author Albert Goldman declared that popular music of the 1960s was, quote, the most important cultural event in the history of America. The 1960s were the perfect time for Satan to introduce his revolution. He had already established his groundwork through men like Harry Hay and Kinsey and Timothy Leary. Both Kennedy and Martin Luther King were shot dead, and the environment was ripe for revolution as the baby boomer generation was living in a spiritual vacuum. Elvis Presley, like no other artist before or after, had an uncanny effect on millions of his fans. He said he had no control over the way his body responded to music, and described the transformation that took place with him on stage as though he were being possessed by some, quote, surge of electricity. Steve Dunleavy, author of Elvis What Happened, stated Elvis Presley was straddling the microphone in the most suggestive of manners, his groin gyrating inches from the upright stand, and he was shaking in convulsive movements as if possessed by an alien spirit. When he sang loudly, he commanded his worshippers. Later in life, Elvis would acknowledge that the strange powers that he'd wielded over his audiences were occultic powers that he'd received from the spirit world. Elvis, as a child, believed that he was being guided by the voice of his brother Jesse, who had died at birth, but later admitted that he was being used by a hierarchy of spirit beings. 
His close friend Larry Geller wrote that Elvis believed that he was working under the aegis of these masters, that they had helped him. Elvis admitted, I always felt an unseen hand behind me. I heard that same voice and thought it was my brother. That's what I thought. I heard this guidance guiding me all my life. That's why I'm here and why I'm doing this. This didn't just happen. This wasn't mere happenstance. Author Gary Herman stated that Elvis, quote, recognized the devil's part in his success. Elvis's bodyguards, known as the Memphis Mafia, who lived with Elvis Presley for several years, witnessed firsthand his occultic powers and his influence over his millions of fans. Elvis's yeah. former bodyguards revealed that Elvis not only believed that he had occultic powers, but that he was a prophet and that they were his disciples. Red West declared he likes to be in control. He likes to be a God figure. For many years, with real seriousness, he called us his disciples. Red West declared with conviction that Elvis possessed some kind of special powers, something like psychic powers, he said. Elvis proved it to me again and again. Sonny West, the cousin of Red West, was also considered a disciple by Elvis. Sonny tells about Elvis's amazing occultic powers. Sonny West admitted he genuinely believes that he is a prophet and we were his disciples. He certainly had a power over us. He certainly had control over me. I admit it. I mean, he had me going where I was making telephone calls about getting Mike Stone hit. I am no killer. Elvis actually had plotted to murder a number of people. Sonny West tells how Elvis sought to use his occultic powers to manipulate him to murder Mike Stone. Elvis, there is no room in this city for the vulgar performances of Elvis Presley. It's shocking. I watched him gyrate his legs and swivel his hips. And our parent-teachers group feels he should not be on television. You ain't nothing but a Rock and roll has got to go. And go it does at KWK. We're all through playing rock and roll records. This week is record-breaking week here at KWK. And after this week, no more rock and roll will be played on the air. Now, ladies and gentlemen... So great was the concern regarding rock music's propensity to propagate both violence and sexual deviancy that Elvis Presley was shot from the waist up on his second Ed Sullivan appearance. In the 1960s, counterculture revolutionist Jerry Rubin, echoing Satanist Aleister Crowley's philosophy of do what thou wilt in his book Do It, said, We don't want to be responsible. We're irrational. We're irrational and crazy. Rubin, as a co-founder of the Yippie Revolution, in a chapter of his book on Elvis Presley and the subversive power of rock music, declared that rock music was the force that was being used to bring about the revolution. He declared the new left sprang from Elvis's gyrating pelvis. Hard animal rock energy beat surged hot through us, the driving rhythm arousing repressed passions. He further stated affluent culture by producing a car and a car radio for every middle class home gave Elvis a base for recruiting. While a car radio in the front seat rocked, young kids in the back seat were having sex to the hard Hard rock beat. The backseat produced the sexual revolution, and the car radio was the medium for subversion. Why don't we do it in the road? And then all these kids are out here doing it in the road. And then you're singing all that stuff and saying, well, it's all Charlie's fault. Hey, man, I didn't write the songs. As early as 1956, a Christian minister by the name of Albert Carter warned in words that would later prove to be prophetic, quote, the effect of rock and roll on young people is to turn them into devil worshippers, to stimulate self-expression through sex, to provoke lawlessness, impair nervous stability, and destroy the sanctity of marriage. It is an evil influence on the youth of our family. Incredibly, this is exactly what has happened in our nation and throughout the world as the diabolical forces that used Elvis Presley were unleashed to influence the entire planet. Satan continued to deceive the public, claiming in the 1960s that rock music was heralding peace on earth. It was only a matter of time, though, before the peace symbol was turned into the devil horns. Today, like never before, rock and rap artists are steeped in leading the youth of the world away from Jesus Christ and down the broad road to destruction. Today, many of the most popular themes in rock music are the promotion of witchcraft and the occult, antichrist themes of blasphemy, alcoholism, drug addiction, sexual perversion, murder, rape, adultery, fornication, violence, hatred, bestiality, suicide, and death. While Elvis Presley's once shocking gyrating pelvis suddenly became acceptable. In the 1960s, the Rolling Stones had to change the sexually suggestive lyrics of Let's Spend the Night Together to Let's Spend Some Time Together.
1965, the Rolling Stones would perform Satisfaction, which was loaded with sexual innuendo. Mick Jagger would later admit that if it had come a little bit earlier, he'd have had to tone it down so that it would be accepted by the masses. And in Satisfaction, the whole thing was I just wrote where it was a felt. If it had been maybe earlier on, I would have toned it all down. So jaded has our world become that after the turn of the century, even the teeny bopper music makes Elvis look tame by way of comparison. Today, much of the music that is called innocent and is used to target the little children is way more pornographic than anything Elvis had to bring to the table.